And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. Jeff Owens here, Interim General Manager at WEIU. We're going to talk about the city of Charleston today. We have the mayor, Dr. Brandon Combs. Hello, Jeff. Nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming out of money. And city manager, Mr. Scott Smith. Jeff, good to see you. You too, guys. Thanks for coming in. And uh, uh, we'll talk a lot about Charleston and what's happening. Uh, just, we'll just kind of start it off. It's, it's where it's 2020 already. Uh, so I guess what's happening for 2020 here in the, the city of Charleston? There. <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, there's <laughs> you there's a lot 96 of emails. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, I mean, there's a, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's just a, a, a still a, a really good buzz going on uh, about, about things. Obviously, the stuff at the lake. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on there. We're gonna have uh, things on Lincoln. Um, uh, hopefully, started and done. Um, some plans that the city has to help beautify Lincoln as well as uh, the state redoes 16 there. And, and what is the prognosis of 16? I know it got delayed a little bit, right? So the bid opening's Friday. Okay. Yeah. This Friday. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be huge. Um, and then some other things in the works, not necessarily can say, but some, some good things. And I think having the new enterprise zone that we have now in Lincoln that, that helps businesses, and, and not just on Lincoln, but around... Uh, certain places around town. I mean, you know, it's really going to help. And there's, uh, like I said, there's a handful of new and up and coming things that are on on our city planner's desk and and our inspector's desk. And I mean, it's just it's good to see. So yeah, and in this last year, so many little nice shops have opened up around around the area, and I think that helps too. So I mean, yes, what do you attribute that success to? Besides yourself, I mean. You. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean Scott and I don't take uh, credit for any of that. Neither does council. You know, it's just there's more of a buy-in. Um, you know, people are, are, are seeing the value of, uh, again, of some of the smaller places, you know, and, and uh, I will have to take my hat off to, or tip my hat to Ryan Strange, all the things that he's done up on the square, and he has more plans up there, and, you know, the square is just, uh, just buzzing again, and then it's bringing people to town, and then all the, like I said, out the lake, I mean, the amount of people that visit there and come through and see Charleston, and, I mean, you know, we had, what is that, Wright, Illinois, I mean, there's just been a lot of different groups coming through. Uh, I catch um, a hard time from everyone for this, but, you know, us being the mayor, or I mean the mayor, the uh, butterfly fly capital, um, and then me being the butterfly mayor, I get, <laughs> but hey, I'm in the biology department, so that happens. But, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of different things that's just starting to uh, kind of come and flow together, and, and I guess there's just uh, a stronger sense of community, wouldn't you say, Scott? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. people are starting to, to buy in. We saw Eastern go down, and that scared a lot of people, and then the community started coming together, and it's just continually, I mean, you know, turning that ship takes some time, but that, that ship's turning, and we're just getting a lot more buy-in and, and people seeing the value of, of what Charleston has to offer. Yeah, I think, as the mayor noted, I think one of the most exciting projects will obviously be Lincoln Avenue because that is the gateway to Charleston. Uh, and that's something that we've been talking about for years and talking with our friends at IDOT and, and the importance of, of really cleaning up Lincoln Avenue. And that's a great first step because it's going to be all new pavement. Uh, they're going to you know fix all the intersections, new traffic signals, um, pet heads, everything. Basically, from when you drive into town, um, that first section of pavement from Lerna all the way to uh, the Twin Bridges is going to be done first. And then, again, all new, all new pavement all the way through town and the new traffic lights. And we're going to put lighted street signs on a few of the intersections. So it's really going to dress up Lincoln. I know that what's President the, Glassman's oh, excited about it, too. So. What's the timeline on that? The bid so it's, it's out for bid and on Friday. I don't have the projected time frame as far as work commencing or anything yet. But some of the work will start, you know, obviously this year. They won't get it all done this year, but, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> Well, that's going, to be, that's going to be unbelievable, though, when you think about it. And, and, and I think people have been looking forward to it because yeah. of the delay, and yeah. so they'll definitely be ready for it. You've been talking about a lot about Lake Charleston and, and the improvements over the last couple of years at Lake Charleston. A lot of times when I want to get away, I'll just go out there and drive because it's, it's so cool you know, during the day. But just talk about that for many of the folks who – we're starting a new semester, so there's new people in the area, new people, new professors on town and, and you know in town uh, as well. Just talk about what Lake Charleston is and what it's become out there. Well, you know, it's a, it's been a 
multi-year um, pronged approach, I guess. And of course, Brendan Lynch and, and several guys at the city have been, you know, very intimately involved in the project. We've got a lot of community volunteers and support too. Uh, I mean, we've received numerous grants and, and awards for our efforts out there. But you know, we've got uh, miles of trails now all the way around the perimeter of Lake Charles, and quite a few trails on the Lake Island Track hillside. Um, we put the new pavilion and the restroom facilities in out there. Uh, significantly improved the the dike with some seating and covered areas to set. Uh, we've got one up at Lakeview Park as well. The source the access bridge from Lakeview Trails that'll get you down to the south side of the lake and bring you over to the Russell Pier. And then just recently last fall we completed the shoreline sheet piling and and installed the new uh, walking path there right along the water's edge on what's known as Dam A. Uh, we're going to be putting in a new boat dock um, here soon. Uh, and making some improvements to the boat ramp to the lake. And then the riprap project that was also completed at the same time uh, that the new uh, walk path was put in down on the water's edge there uh, on Dam A um, uh, stretches from the boat ramp on the lake all the way around to the dike. And so there's a walking trail now there on the, uh, what would be the north side of the Lake Island track, but the south side of the lake. So you can really walk around the lake now all the way, a couple different routes yeah. to get there. Uh, and then uh, additional improvements there on Dam A, again, as I mentioned, will be the boat dock, boat ramp uh, improvement. Um, we've got some additional work to do up on the roadside as well as an additional sidewalk that will be installed there and some other decorative things, benches and lighting and all that that will be done yet this year. So uh, a lot of things left to do out there, but, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to see the... I think about six years ago. Yeah, it looks like yeah. Today. You know, really all the efforts and, and the number of people out there year-round is just astronomical. I mean, we had some good weather there a couple of weeks ago. You know, we get up into the 40s or 50s and people just come out they flock. in droves out there. So, um, you know, um, we're still seeing some fairly mild temperatures and Again, the use out there is tremendous, even in the winter months. There. Speaking of weather, we had some uh, obviously a lot of rain over the weekend yeah. here. Any flooding issues in yeah. the city or at Lake? Yeah. Or is there any problems we, out there? We always do. You know, we've got a number of flooding issues that we're dealing with and have been all weekend long. And of course, Kurt and the Public Works guys are, are dealing with it today. We just had our staff meeting before I came, and so Kurt's got a handful of things that he's working on with our crews. So yeah, we had flooding, you know, along the Town Branch Creek, which can get out of its banks. A um, couple of business locations that typically flood, flooded. Um, and, you know, we always get a few flooded basements and some wet areas in town whenever we get significant rainfall. So yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but it, it does happen. There's a lot so. of rain. I know one of the other things you guys want to talk about, and we've had a lot of guests on about this because of the importance of Census 2020 coming up in April. Talk about what the census means and why people need to really take heed to this and, and make sure that they get themselves, you know, into that census. Well, the census, of course, is extremely important uh, to all of us because, again, having the head count is so vitally important as it relates to dollars and funding sources. And, and a lot of our grants are very dependent upon that as well. So we want to make sure we get everybody counted. Uh, it's extremely important for our shared revenues and a lot of our grant funding and the way money flows into the city for shared revenues. Uh, we've got to get people counted. So, you know, Steve and, and uh, Beth Gillespie, we've got a uh, complete count committee we've had in place now for over a year. They've been meeting, uh, getting the word out. Uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, open forums that are going to be conducted here in the next uh, month or so at the library. There's information out on that. So there's a lot of promotion and uh, and marketing going on about it right now. And you can always get information on our website about it. But we would encourage anyone and everyone to come out to those forums at the library. They're going to be held uh, over the next few weeks. So. Okay. Uh, you know, Mayor, Mayor Combs, you, you, you touched a little bit about, the, I know you can't name names, but it seems like you there are potentially some new businesses looking at Charleston. Could you at least uh, 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 talk? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, new businesses and people that have existing businesses expanding too, um, you know, I, I, I can already see a couple uh, new things popping up on on Lincoln um, that we've been in the in the works or talking to back and forth, you know, here and there, and uh, I'm really excited about about those. Very, very excited about those. And then, um, yeah, Ryan Strange is going to do another project up on the square. And then, um, you know, uh, I know Mark Jackson, he's always looking into doing a few things. And, and now that the Enterprise Zone is here um, and the incentives And Stu's reopened for the, for the food side, right? Yes, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's, I mean, he's got some other ideas and other things in the work, works. And, uh, but, 
a lot of them were just waiting to for this enterprise zone because of what it what it helps them with and i think that that's um that's huge and it helps entice uh the people to want to put the to the money in because of uh the incentives that that you know we have because with the enterprise zone only industrial there's no industrial yeah. things along lincoln and 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 some of the other places that we have the enterprise zone so you know, this just opens it up and makes it uh, more welcoming to be able to do the things that people have been wanting to do. When you look towards 2020, and both of you can answer this, what are some of the other, like, in, inside the city limits projects that we will we can expect and parks and streets and other things? I mean, you touched yeah. Lincoln. But yeah, I, I to touched on Lincoln. That's going to be a big project. Of course, that's a primarily driven by, obviously, the state of Illinois and yeah. IDOT in particular. The city will have a financial share in that as well, but that's a big one, obviously. Uh, we're finishing up some parking lot projects along the bike path, um, basically from Charleston out to Locks Road. We've got another project at, at the Locks Road parking area that we intend to get started here in the spring uh, once the funding sources are secured. So that's exciting. Some additional work along the bike path in preparation of the ITAP uh, bike path project, which is going to go on uh, soon. And then uh, that's also out for bid, getting ready to go out for uh, bid, or it's out for bid and bid opening uh, here pretty soon paving. for the paving for the portion of it. it. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, we've got a number of um, uh, storm uh, sewer projects. Uh, we're still finishing up a big sidewalk improvement project that was grant funded. Uh, we got about uh, 40 to 50 percent of that done, um, but uh, we've got a long way to go, so our crews will be busy for the rest of 2020, primarily in the construction season to get that knocked out. So a lot of things that are very visible to our residents will be going on, in particular sidewalks. That's always very, very popular um, that uh, I know our crews will be working, and even throughout the winter if, if weather uh, permits. I know, talk to a lot of people when you when you talk about the bike and the, and the hiking trails. Uh, you know, to really make it almost a Coles County. Correct. Is that kind of the long term goal yeah. to make this where people can yeah, really think, go around the entire county? I think that that's one of the advantages with the ITEP project is is really to not that we don't already have a trail in place, yeah. but to improve what we have, and by improving it, it will certainly entice additional riders to to utilize the trail. There's always been some concerns about that that aggregate base that we had along that trail and so it'll be paved and that'll make it safer and probably a more enjoyable ride for for folks to ride on so you know that's in the works and obviously uh, while we weren't able to get everything we wanted to do with the itep project particularly on matt Toon's side on the west side we're still going to have a very very nice improved trail and path so we're excited about that and i know in talking with dean and the folks on matt Toon, i'm sure that they have intentions or plans of getting uh, basically that that next segment done and you can get from the, the amtrak station over the trail and get all the way over to Charleston so you know start promoting some some day trips or weekend trips that type of thing where you can throw a bike on on the train and come on down and get on the trail and and really head all the way out to, to Lake Charleston and, and as, you, as you're aware uh, fortunately you know there's some additional trails that are going on between Lake Charleston and down to Fox Ridge State yeah. Park so it seems like every year there's an, this expansion of trails and trails available for people to enjoy how does the city market that to you know so it's just not like you said the aggregate the same people coming all so you get it you know further out do you do you is there is there certain ways that you can get the news to, yeah, to the, the biking yeah. community uh, obviously diane and our tourism department well, in collaborations with the chamber we're running a number of special events annually uh, we've got a lot of races and you know of course the tour to charleston's a big one that we're running we had the right illinois group as the mayor mentioned last year and that exposed a, uh, a lot of folks that that will go to different events through Wright, Illinois, that had a chance to park in Charleston for a few days last summer, they'll come back down. There several of those folks that were here have mentioned that they'll come in and spend a weekend or, or spend a few days in Charleston uh, in the future. So every time we can touch some folks like that or have an event or sponsor event or collaborate with another community and have a two- or three-day event where they're in and around Charleston, that's huge. And so as the tour to Charleston continues to grow and we're able to participate in some other statewide or regional events, we can get the word out. And then just through our website and other marketing and promotion opportunities that we have to get to that niche or get to people that are interested in that, that's that's our goal. So And that's a pretty strong group too. And word spreads pretty fast. And uh, you know, as he had mentioned earlier, like with Brendan uh, he is there at the bike shop. I mean, he reaches out to a lot of people, but I mean, he's in a lot of different groups and, and uh, uh, he's helped my wife who deals with my mayor page get things out into these different these different yeah. forums and stuff like that and with the pictures and and just you know show what we have 
uh, that spreads really, really fast. Yeah, social uh, media sometimes is a yeah. wonderful thing. Social right? media, cross marketing, all that stuff. So yeah. we're getting better at it. Um, and again, we've we've had a variety of events over the last few years that have enabled us to get the word out to a lot more people, and we'll mm -hmm. continue to do that. There you go. Uh, where are we at in the election cycle, Mayor Combs? I always ask you that because I know where we're trying to um, out. Next spring. Next spring? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the next spring. Mm -hmm. Next time, spring. Time we'll, we'll have, have, again? You know, we'll have the mayor in two, two seats open next year. So Yeah. That's the plan. All right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love him. Yep, that's the plan. Next question, Jeff. <laughs> He's well, thinking about those well, 96. I mean, I, I, I enjoy it. I, I, that's what I want to know. You know, the it. thing is, is um, I, as, as I've said multiple times, um, I love this community. I enjoy it. And it hasn't been... Uh, Honestly, it's it's not really a burden. It's it, 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 I mean, it, ha it comes with its, its times, but I mean, for the most part, um, I love this community. And when people see your passion, and and you know, it just doesn't. Uh, and I focus on the positive. And when you get that kind of focus, and you talk with people, and like I said, quickly, it's easy to turn things around to show, hey, look at all the actual positive things that we do have. Because it's easy to, I've been here my whole life, like Scott, and it's sometimes it's easy to take things for, for granted that we do have here. But, I mean, you know, we have such a, a blessed community, and there's so many people that come here, and uh, I'll get an email, or, or I'll run into them, or I'll go talk to a group that's here in town, and, and I hear all the time, this is such, this is... Why is this place so hidden? I mean, you know, we need to, uh, you know, the, we just love this place, and so it makes it, it makes it easy. And we have with Scott, uh, him and I working together, and 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 the staff. I mean, it's just it's just a it's honestly a real a real honor to be able to call myself the mayor of Charleston because of all the wonderful things that we're able to do. Hey, it's funny you said that last week. I had Dan Cruz on the show, and he was talking about the same thing about Dowden. And when people come to Dowden, they're like, holy cow, how's Dowden here? And, and, you know, and you have the bike path. And right. so when, when all these things start working together, and Eastern's made the, the recovery it has, then that, it kind of is like, the, it just, it just kind of, you know, speedballs ahead there's a little a, There's a buzz. Yeah. There, there really is. And, and I can say, um, and President Glassman can also attest to this. We have other mayors and other universities that will reach out to us and want to know what, what, what's going on in Charleston. What, what's a, oh, I don't want to share what we're doing. You know, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're here to help help you know grow Charleston and grow EIU, and that's that's what we are here to do. So I want to come down and spend a weekend. Look around. Exactly. <laughs> I think there's a lot of collaborations that that maybe didn't take place years ago that that are. Maybe those were forced, you know, a lot of, yeah. you know, forced collaborations or collaborations where we're sharing more and utilizing the resources and not everybody's doing their own thing. We're kind of working together, and I think that helps. And don't you think sometimes also you almost have to hit a rock bottom as you a do. community and as a county, and then everybody says, hey, what are we going to do? We're giving up or are we gonna, we're going to, you know, grab our bootstraps and, and, and work this thing out? And it seems it's happened in both, you know, Mattoon, Charleston, as well as EIU, at least, you know, from my opinion. Yeah, so, I think yeah. things are improving. And, yep. and again, like the mayor mentioned, there's a lot of good signs. We start talking to the business community. Again, we're not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, because we don't have as many students physically here on campus that we used to have, maybe, Jeff, when you and I went to school, but we're, we're making headway. And so every person counts, just like, the, just like the census. We get more and more folks actually here physically on campus going to school. That helps our retail market. It helps our business community. And, um, um, you know, certainly helps, helps out overall. So there's a, just a lot of really good things going on, and I think those collaborations help. What do you think is most important now? Would you rather see uh, a building new homes and build and the building of brand new commercial businesses, or would you rather see more rehab of current homes and current businesses in Charleston? I don't think that's easy to answer, Jeff, because no, I think it's I, I think it's I think it's a little of both. I mean, uh, we've seen some mixed use or student rental properties that have sort of reverted back into single family homes. Uh, and in some areas of the community, I think that's been good. It's given an opportunity for some um, entry-level housing opportunities or starts to, to happen, to occur. And oftentimes what we see is say, you know, I buy a single family home that maybe was a student rental property and I purchase it and then I invest some money in it and I turn it around and make it look real nice. Sometimes that rubs off on the neighbors. And so yeah. we've seen a, lot, seen a lot of that. Uh, of course, there's different grant programs too, but I think it's a combination of both. I, okay. I, I don't know that I would want to see one thing over another. I love the single family remodeling that, that we've got going on. I'd love to see some new homes and we've had a few, not as many maybe as we used to have, but we've had a few. 
Uh, certainly, as the mayor noted, there's been this sort of this revival on the square, rebirth. Ryan Strange has played a big role in that. We've got other business partners that have that have invested or reinvested. Of course, the county's reinvested uh, significant dollars in improvements to the courthouse. That helps. Uh, we've done a lot of work up there with TIFF. I think that's been good and would like to do more. Um, and then all the things that are going on on campus. We talked about Lincoln Avenue getting repaved and the new traffic signals and, and the way that's going to look. So there's just a lot of things that are kind of lining up. Um, you know, that, that really help overall. That's what we want. Anything to add there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can't really pick one over the other. I mean, you want to see an increase in, in, A little both. in, in right. all of it, yeah. When you guys, now that you've got in, into the weeds and you've seen this improvement, is there any, like, I, w I don't want the lack of a better word, but is there a roadblock in any of our zoning or city laws that really need to be revamped or looked at that are causing problems? We're always looking at that, Jeff. I mean, we're looking at the, you know, electric code, the plumbing code. You know, some of the stuff is handed down to us both federally or at the yeah, state yeah, level. Yeah. And so a yeah. lot of that stuff we don't have a lot of control over. I think a lot of people think we do because, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're the enforcer. Yeah. We've got the code enforcement guys that have to go in and inspect and do their jobs. And, again, a lot of those rules and regs are given to us by others. We have certain codes at the local level that we certainly have the opportunity to enforce or enact and we do that but one of the things we like to do is annually revisit those and we've got several committees commissions if you will that help us with that um, you know as part of our comprehensive plan review we're always looking at that and that's something that's in the works right now so we do look at that annually um, to say that we're any better or worse than our neighboring communities I can't say that for sure I think we're very much lined up with Matt Toon certainly you know um, Nobody likes a particular code or procedure that, you know, maybe creates some additional work on their part. But, again, some of that stuff is, is really out of our hands. And it seems like, you know, every year we're finding out that there's more laws that are being enacted either at the federal or state level that then our, our inspectors have to enforce upon. And so, and to share that bad news isn't always everybody's best day. And sometimes that comes with the cost. So, um, sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it does. And that is the tough part that our, our uh, building and planning and, and that they have to deal with is, and something that I have made a mission to go out and explain to people. Um, and it, it's not Charleston trying to hammer something out. We're, we, I mean, we've weighed building codes now. Is this going to be our fifth year? Yeah. We, we've weighed, weighed residential, uh, building yeah, permits. residential building permits. I mean, we've tried to do everything that we can um, from a uh, municipality level to make it easier. But a lot of these things that come down, like for new businesses, and we go in there and, 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 and explain to them, well, this needs to be done, this needs to be done, this needs to be done. Well, they're getting better at saying, hey, it's not us, you know, these are things that, like Scott said, are handed down from the state, and we have to enforce these because if the state comes in, the first person they're going to come to is they're going to come to our inspector and say, hey, why didn't you, do, you know, you yeah. know this is this is, this is this is what needs to be done. Why, why aren't you doing this? So communicating that um, helps out, and I've been told by multiple uh, people that have been building in the community for 25, 30 years that uh, it's been easier to build and remodel and do things in Charleston than it has in, in many years. Uh, and, and some of them that have told me that, I, I, I mean, it's meant a lot. And they say our departments are, are, you know, it's easy to work with. And our guys try to help out. And I always encourage anybody that's wanting to build or, or remodel or, or start a new project to come in before they start the new project mm -hmm. and sit down with Alex and Steve uh, and and they'll help them along the way let them know you know here's that the, here's the hurdles that you're going to have here's what the state recommends and here's you know here's the the best way to do it to save you money and that's really helped out a lot and it's gone a long way I think the proactive approach as the mayor's noted but that is the most important thing and yeah. any remodeling any new project addition or anything you just take the time to call and ask a few questions boy that'll save you a ton of time on the back end and that's something I think we're really really good at mm -hmm. and that's what I was going to ask you next about how you get city residents to ask questions and and, and look into stuff and how and so they can feel like they're a part of the decision making yeah. process is that kind of come in with the contractor early on and be a part of it you yeah. know it's one thing to send the contractor up whenever you're having some work done at your home it's it's another thing to physically come up with them so that you're a party to those conversations so you know what's going on. And you understand yeah. why uh, the contractors and what they have to do. It's not, it's not to make it difficult. It's that we have to <laughs> abide by these things.
Makes sense. When's the next sitting of council meeting? Is there any, uh, and what's the major next, agenda? Next Tuesday next evening, Tuesday. the agenda is still in the works. We okay. had our staff meeting okay. this morning, so the agenda won't be finalized till the end of the week. Anything I left out that you guys want to talk about? We have a couple minutes left here. We're talking to Scott Smith and Brandon Combs all about the city of Charleston today. And if there's stuff that you guys Yeah, we're just everybody. really excited for 2020. A lot of good things going again. Kind of a continuation of a lot of the projects that have been going on the last few years that we're going to try to wrap up some of those this year. Of course, they're really never completely done <laughs> jeff as you know but again another phase of the lake will be wrapped up and and we're excited to get the boat ramp and the boat dock and you know all that work over there on dam a done we're really excited about that and get some of the big heavy machinery and equipment out of there so people can enjoy it so uh, we appreciate everybody's patience but we're excited about it and certainly lincoln avenue i'm excited about that i saw a fun question people are asking city mayors across the country and city managers is if you had a two million dollar grant that they just handed you that you could do whatever you wanted with it to help the city of charleston just off the top of your head, is it, what, what would you think would be some of the things you'd want to do? And pay off debts doesn't can't be one. It's oh, got to be. It's got to be something. I think we'd probably neat. say the same thing, but I'll let Scott go. Well, I think for us, for you know, if we had two million dollars again, it's it's reinvest in capital infrastructure. You know, it's take care of things that need to be taken care of: roads, sewers, sidewalks. You know, public improvements to the parks, um, down at the lake, those kinds of things. Um, reinvest. And that's one of the things that a lot of communities don't do is they stop reinvesting in tough times. And we've sought out a lot of grants and continue to reinvest and keep our employees working at times when a lot of communities are struggling. Not that we're not struggling. Everybody has over the last 10 years. But we've continued to reinvest because we've been very aggressive in asking for help and assistance and seeking out grants. And that's been very, very beneficial. It's a good answer. Yeah, no, that's been, that, that is, that's great because we have been able to do it. And that's hats off to, once again, Scott and his team. And we get together and have our annual retreat. And I see all the things that we have done. And, you know, but if you could hand me maybe three to five million, I would say <laughs> we could continue this. And then, uh, I, I still, and I think Scott and I both would like to see some sort of a community type center out here mm -hmm. to tie in with all the trails and all the stuff that we have, um, you know, and I don't think Scott uh, and I either one are ever going to get that thought out of our head and, and continue, continuing to grow on what we've already been able to grow grow with, that would just be a phenomenal addition. We are hoping to make some improvements to the, what I call Sister City Phase 2, which is the property that we acquired from First Christian Church. And as you drive by today, you'll notice the church is well on their way to getting mm -hmm. their new church built and constructed and hopefully getting that open in the spring. So um, we are starting to have conversations internally about the next step, next phase for maybe some infrastructure roads, sidewalks, other uh, utility improvements at the site. But yes, I agree with the mayor. If I if you handed me $10 million, I'd build you a new building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wish I could, my friend. Yeah. There's a little bit of time left. I'll ask you one silly question. Super Bowl winner, we're down to Final Four. Who's going to win it, Jimmy G or what? i got to go with Jimmy G, yeah. yeah me too. I mean, I why go not? I mean, we, yeah. we have to. I think so. I mean, yeah. yeah. Since the Steelers and Bears are out, right? Yeah, so exactly. We'll go with Jimmy G. So hopefully the Niners win. Well, boys, always great to see you and learn a lot about Charleston today. That's Mayor Brandon Combs and City Manager Scott Smith. Thank you, Jeff, Thanks for having us. Jeff. This is WEIU. Everyone, have a great day.